Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Root Solutions video. I'm Rory Bocock and today I'm going to be creating the Apple earbud in Creo Parametric 4. Um, so I've got here on screen here a quick render of the finished model. Um, the use key shot to generate this render if any of you are interested. Um, and I'm just going to show you how I went about creating uh, this earbud. Um, so all we're going to be doing today is using standard Creo functionality. I'm not going to be using any extensions um, that come with Creo, so no ISDX or anything like that. It's all standard Creo functionality. I am going to make use of a certain tool that some of you may have heard of or may not have heard of, um, which is Freestyle, which is great for generating sort of freeform surfaces. Uh, and that's what I use mainly to generate sort of the sort of the earpiece or of the Apple earbud. So if I just close out of this render and close that down, I'll jump over to just jump into Creo here, uh, and this is the final model um, that I created. Okay, in Creo. Um, so a lot of the work here had been done using this freestyle feature here, uh, and I'll be showing that as we go through. But as I said, this is all standard Creo functionality. So if you've got a, a recent Creo license, um, you should be able to follow follow along no problem um, with this with this demonstration. So it's going to start a new part here, and we'll go in and, uh, and recreate this uh, this earbud. So we'll give it a name. Let's call it earbud. Okay. And I'll just turn on my planes and coordinate systems. So the first thing we're going to do is create the stem of the earbud. Okay. And just to do that, we're just going to use traditional uh, parametric surface. So I'm going to generate an extrude, and I'm using Creo 4 here. So I'm making use of the mini toolbar. Uh, to jump straight into an extrude feature here. And I'll just sketch out a circle and give that a diameter of 5mm. And we'll hit OK on the sketch. So now I'm creating a, an extruded cylinder here. It's going to flip the direction over, so I'm going to use the drag handle uh, and pull down, and we're going to give that a dimension of 25mm. This is currently a solid though, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to swap over uh, and change that into a surface using the right hand mouse button there. So that's the first feature done, uh, nice and straightforward. What I'm going to do is navigate around to the front here, and we'll turn off our uh, datums just so they don't get in the way. Uh, and now most of the work here, I said, is going to be done using the Freestyle tool. So this is basic functionality of Creo, uh, and you can access that from the Surfaces group here. So you click on Freestyle. Uh, and that enters the freestyle environment. So freestyle is a, a freeform surface modeler, uh, and you work off. You start with a primitive shape, like a sphere or a circle, and then start pushing and pulling it around. Um, it's kind of like working with Play-Doh, adding bits on, rolling it out, that sort of stuff. So we're going to start off um, with a primitive shape. Okay, so from the shape drop down, we're going to choose a sphere, and then I plonk that down um, right on top of the default coordinate system within Creo. Now what this has is um, it's developed a mesh around this sphere and we can start picking and clicking on this mesh, pushing and pulling, uh, rotating, adding bits on using sort of extrudes and that sort of stuff. I'm just going to undo that, back to the start and again I'm just going to rotate around to the front. So we're going to use Freestyle um, to generate the main shape of our earbud. So what I'm going to do first of all, just do a big box selection that will select the entire mesh as a whole and I'm going to start moving that sphere around as an entirety. Okay. Under the right hand mouse button we have a lot of the tools that are across the top of the dashboard here, um, or the ribbon, uh, and they're all available under the right hand mouse button like this. So I'm just going to swap over to a scale and holding control I'm just going to increase the scale of our sphere. Okay. So if we look at that overall, um, it's a bit big, probably bring that down just slightly. So holding control and dragging on the axis, that will scale the thing as an entirety uh, rather than just in a specific orientation or specific direction I should say. Okay, I'm now just going to rotate around to the right hand side. Uh, you can deselect by clicking in the background, drag another box selection around this right hand edge here and we're just going to convert over to translate rather than scale and pull that front surface, that surface back there. Okay, so we're just creating that sort of front face of the earbud. What I'm going to do now, again, just rotate round um, to the back side here, and I'm going to click on this front surface, or this back surface, I should say, or the back side of the mesh. 
And what I'm going to do, I want to sort of subdivide that face. Uh, so I want to end up with a smaller face inside of that bigger face. And I can do that using this face split here. Okay. So I'm click on face split, and that gives me a smaller square inside of a bigger square. Okay. Now that I've done that, I can rotate around to that the back so I'm nice and lined up. I'm going to box select this front edge. Again, transform over to a scale. And then not holding control this time, I'm just going to bring that front edge down. That gives you that sort of pointed um, effect on the front hand side there. I'm also going to do box select the entire item again. Use the translate tool. And I'm just going to pull that forward slightly. Okay, So the earbud is slightly offset. And then I'm going to do the opposite with that central face in the middle. So just clicking on that face, um, I can select that. And I'm going to pull that face to the left hand side. Just to try and sort of center this up above uh, the main cylinder of the uh, earbud. Rotate around slightly. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull that face outward slightly. Okay. After doing that, just rotate around to the right and box select this in these inside edges in here. Okay, so this is these vertical edges here. We're just going to pull out, and again, I'm just going to pull those out a bit further. And I might just do the same with this far edge here. So with freestyle, you're working with this mesh, <coughs> which is generating your surfaces underneath. Uh, and say so Creo is doing all the hard work, so everything it's doing is generating with four-sided patches, and everything we do here is curvature continuous. Okay, so we're getting really high degree surfaces out of the freestyle tool. So we've got this back face. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another bit on to this, this front face. And I'm going to do that using an extrude. So under the right hand mouse button again, let's go to pick the face and I'm going to create an extrude. That's just going to give us another solid lump on, on that back side there. Again, all I'm going to do is using this dragger, I'm just going to rotate and reposition this front face okay now one of the tools in here I'm just going to turn my planes on um, is the planarize tool so once I've chosen this front face here I can click on planarize and pick a plane and then it will align those that face that I've selected on my mesh parallel to the date and plane I've just chosen okay so we've got a good rough shape going on here um, but what I really want to do is I want to start. I want to join this to uh, my main cylinder. So to do that, what I do is rotate around again. I'm going to select this bottom face of this mesh, uh, which is actually controlling this little bit of surface here on the bottom of this um, extrude. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete that surface out. So with my front face selected, I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard, and that will remove that surface or that surface patch. What I'm now going to do is I'm now going to select these edges and I'm going to align these to my parametric geometry. So I'm going to align them to the top of this cylinder. So to do that, just turn off my planes to declutter the interface slightly. I'm going to select my first edge. Okay. I'm going to hold shift and highlight over the same edge that I've just selected. And that will highlight the edge loop. Okay. And I'll select that with the left hand mouse button. With those edges now selected, what I want to do is align those to this cylinder. So under the right hand mouse button, I have a line, or I, up here in the uh, ribbon is a line as well. But I like to go from the right hand mouse button. What I'm now going to do is pick the geometry I want to align it to. Okay, and in freestyle, you can align it to edges or sketches. Okay, so this is an edge of a surface. So I'm going to pick my first edge, hold shift, pick my second edge, and then middle mouse click to finish off. The alignment. Okay, now what you can see has happened is Creo has merged my freestyle surface with my parametric cylinder. <clears throat> but at the moment, you can see it's just kind of gone for a free connection. Okay, so there's no sort of tangency between this surface and this surface here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click on this dotted line, and that will align that normal to that face. So now we've got a nice tangent connection between these two bits of geometry. So you can see rather quickly we started to develop um, our earbud shape and what we're just going to do now is just go in and start tweaking um, the model slightly. Okay, So I'm just going to start clicking on bits of the, uh, the mesh and pulling and pushing them around slightly uh, to get a slightly more realistic look on that earbud. Okay.
Okay, so I'm happy with that overall shape now. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit OK, and that's our freestyle surface completed. So these are two separate quilts. So if I just swap over my selection filter here to quilt, we can see they, these are currently two separate quilts. So I'm just going to join those together using a merge. So clicking on my first quilt, holding control, clicking on my second. Um, I've then got a merge um, in my mini toolbar. If you don't have a merge in your mini toolbar, you can easily customize this um, by right clicking and saying customize. You can then just do a simple drag and drop function in there. But as I've already got it, I'm going to click cancel. Or you can come up to the top here, obviously, like uh, if you're in Creo 2 or Creo 3, come up top and do a merge from there as well. So now we have one quilt. So the next thing to do is start sort of trimming bits out of um, the earbud. Uh, so to start generating some of those holes that are in the uh, earbuds. So if I just jump back to the render, you see I've got some holes in here. Um, so we're just going to start creating those little bits of geometry there. So turn my planes on, uh, and the first one I'm going to do is just the little cutout on this front face here. So I'm going to generate a sketch uh, on my front datum plane here. Um, so create a sketch on there, and then I'm going to use a tool from the palette. Okay, so open up the palette, and I'm going to drag in a racetrack shape. Okay, so just drag that into the middle of nowhere here, scale that down slightly, and just drag that roughly into the right position. Yeah, scale that down a bit further, and I hit OK. I'll now go in and sort of dimension that up a bit better. So let's say 5 mil by let's maybe 1.5. So look at that. I think that might be a bit too wide. We'll drop that down to 4. That's pretty good. I'm box selecting that and just use rotate resize just to freely drag that. I'm not too concerned about the position of this. Uh, you could obviously go in and fully constrain that and dimension that up if you wanted to. I'm quite happy with it just in that location there. So I'm going to hit OK. What now we're going to do with that still selected, so with my sketch selected here, I'm going to project that onto my quill. And I'm just query selecting there, so right with the right hand mouse button, clicking through, cycling through the available options till I find my entire quilt. And then I'm going to select that with the left hand mouse button. That's then projected that curve or that sketch onto this surface. Now there is another one up top here, uh, a very similar cutout on the earbud. So again, I'm going to replicate the exact same thing I've just done there by creating a sketch on my top datum plane, jumping into the palette, pulling out a racetrack, this time doing a rotate, so grabbing the drag handle, rotating that round. Actually, I didn't need to do that, I'll undo that. Um, we'll just drag that into position and scale that down. Okay, so it's pretty much in the center, and that looks about good actually. So I'll hit OK on that. We'll jump back, I'm not sure what happened there. We'll scale that down. Yeah, OK on that, and there we go. And again, I'm going to project that onto my quilt. So before we go ahead and thicken this out, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to trim this quilt. So I'm going to end up with sort of the main body and then my cutouts as separate surfaces. Okay, that'll help. That'll just save me a, a, an extra step later on. So again, I'm going to select my quilt. This time I'm going to do a trim. I'm going to pick my curve that we've projected onto the surface here. And then using the arrow in the dashboard here, I'm just going to click that twice to end up with two arrows pointing both sides uh, of the trimming object, which is our curve here. And middle mouse click. That now gives me two separate quilts. Okay, it gives me this outside quilt and that inside quilt. I'm going to do the same for this side here. So selecting my quilt, choosing trim, picking my object, and clicking the arrows twice to generate a quilt both on the inside and the outside. What I'm going to do now is we're going to solidify, oh, sorry, no we're not, we are going to thicken out 
uh, this surface, or this quilt, I should say. Okay. So, I pick my quilt, and we're going to choose thicken. Okay. And we want to thicken that by, let's say, 0.2. And because we've already trimmed these quilts, you can see it's leaving those uh, uh, those little bits of surfaces out of this operation, which is exactly what we want. So, middle mouse click, that's then thickened that object out by two millimeters, okay? <clears throat> Next, we're just gonna cut this front uh, end off to leave ourselves with an opening on this on this front side here. I'm gonna turn my planes back on. I'm gonna create an offset plane from my original right-hand datum. So, generate a new plane from that. We're generating an offset plane. I'll just rotate around to the top here. And we'll pull that out about 13 millimeters. What I now want to do is create another plane that's at a slight angle um, to my original object. Okay. Um, so to do that, I want to generate a new plane, uh, but I need something to rotate around. So I'm going to create an embedded datum axis. Okay. So I'm going to click axis, and that'll just stack up my datums. So I want my axis to run between the intersection of this plane here and this plane here. So holding control, I'm going to select both of those planes. That'll give me an axis running down the intersection point. Okay. Middle mouse click, I'll jump straight into my datum plane, which has automatically chosen my axis as a reference. I'm going to hold control and select my new datum plane, so DTM1, as my second reference. Okay. That gives me a rotation. So I'm going to enter in minus 15, let's say. Okay, and we'll okay that. To cut this little bit off, I'm going to use a solidify. So with the plane still selected, I'm going to create a solidify. I'm going to flip the direction. That's going to cut this side off, and I'm going to hit OK. So at the moment, that hole's a bit big. Um, so I'm just going to take DTM1, and we're just going to edit that slightly. So double-clicking on that, I can then drag my datum out slightly um, to produce a slightly better cut. Okay. Click in the background to deselect that. Okay, so that pretty much finishes off our earbud. Uh, just got a few finishing touches to do. So the first things first, just going to round this front edge off. Uh, so pick up on my outside edge here using the mini toolbar. It's going to start around. I'm going to hold control and select the inside edge. And then under the right-hand mouse button, I'm just going to make that a full round across the top of there. Middle mouse click to OK that feature. Uh, and so the last thing to do is just fill in this front face um, with the surface, like the other holes are filled in over here. So to do that, I'm just going to turn on my planes. And the first thing I'm going to do is just create a, a brand new plane. So I want my plane to be slightly offset. Um, so it's on the inside of here rather than right on the edge. So I'm just going to create an offset plane from our angled DTM2 plane here. So create a new plane, we'll create an offset, and we'll go for about 0.3 mil. Okay, so we're just offsetting on the inside edge there if I rotate around to the top. We're just coming in 0.3, and maybe we'll come a bit less, we'll do 0.2. And we'll hit OK. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an extruded surface from our top plane. So our top plane runs through here, and I'm just going to create an extrude off that plane. So draw a line, and I'm basically just going to run through. So hold Control and Alt. I'm going to click on my surface on my plane, sorry, as a reference. I'm going to pull a sketch line through there, and we're just going to extrude that up through our model. And so convert over to a surface, and we'll just pull up through, making sure our surface completely covers the hole and the entire part um, as a whole. And we'll hit OK. So what I actually want to do, I want to trim this surface back now, just so this surface fills the hole and it doesn't overlap like it is at the moment. So to do that, I'm going to use another surface uh, to trim this surface. Okay, It's going to be the inside surfaces of our earbud. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to query select the inside face. Okay, so as I hover over, I'm selecting the outside. Query select, which is that right hand mouse button, uh, to select that inside surface. Okay. 
Um, I think I might just be clipping this surface as well, so just as a precaution, hold control and pick the inside face uh, of that surface as well. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm then going to copy and paste those surfaces. So taking a copy and pasting those in place. I'm then going to utilize a trim. So picking up on the surface I want to trim. So trim that. And then our trimming object is query select the quilt. Um, so those copied surfaces uh, through there. We then can see our, our hashed area is the area that's going to be kept. And then the non-hashed area is the area we're going to get rid of. Under options, I'm also going to tell Creo uh, to get rid of the trimming surface. Okay, so those are those copied surfaces we've just made. I actually don't want those in my model. So to uncheck this box under the options, uh, and that will get rid of that surface. Okay, uh, and that finishes off uh, the earbud. So hopefully um, this video has been useful and shown you some new things. Hopefully freestyle, a uh, really useful tool. Use it in a lot of different situations. All I've then done is taken that model, um, threw it to Keyshot um, to produce that render. So I've done nothing different, um, just taken that straight into Keyshot. Uh, I'm not going to cover Keyshot in this video. If you'd like to see the workflow in Keyshot, um, say so in the comments. Uh, I can get around to making a video on that. Uh, also, if you have any other ideas for any other videos you want to see us do, again, leave those in the comments and we'll try and get around to doing those. But for now, thanks for watching. Cheers.